Hi, welcome to our second episode of Whiskey Masterclass Tasting with Sam and Lou. I will uh, I'll give you a, another brief introduction in case you, you somehow missed that fir first episode. You really should go back and watch it though. Uh, I'm Lou Bryson. I'm the author of Whiskey Masterclass and Tasting Whiskey. Um, because of the pandemic, I can't go out on the road to flog the book, so we're doing it from here at home. Sam, uh, Sam copy read the book for me. Uh, Sam is an expert on whiskey in his own right um, and a good friend. Uh, known each other for quite a while. You can say something if you want. No, I want to be teller tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, tonight, what we have for you is a uh, new old overhaul. Uh, old overhaul is a. Um, Wow, uh, a really a old whiskey brand. storied brand. brand. Indeed. Um, Sam, you know more about this than I do. Um, Sam, Sam has a unique interior perspective on this whole thing. So I'm going to let you give, can you give us just a, a really brief rundown brief, on that? Brief, yes, yes, brief. Yes, brief. <laughs> um, old Overholt, uh, started by the Overholt family in southwestern Pennsylvania in 1810. Um, Abraham Overholt was the uh, patriarch of the family that started the distilling. His father actually started distilling there um, a little bit earlier, but when Abraham took over in 1810, it really started to ramp things up. Uh, it became, it quickly became a major whiskey brand. Uh, certainly the biggest rye whiskey in the country at the time um, uh, had incredible success built a new distillery in the mid 1800s um, ramped up the old distillery in the mid 1800s and the the distillation of old overholt in southwestern pennsylvania continued until 1951 at which point uh, national distillers had it distilled elsewhere in pennsylvania for a while and then in i believe 1987 it was purchased by beam who has uh, had ownership of the brand ever since. So the, the Beam guys mentioned at some point that it was made in Ohio for a, a brief period. No, it was always bought. It was bottled, bottled in, Ohio in Ohio once, okay. the, once the distillery closed. But it was always distilled in Pennsylvania. Although for a couple of decades, nobody's really sure where. Right. There were a few uh, distilleries still operating in Pennsylvania into the 70s, and we're not really sure of the lineage at that point. But uh, what Beam Beam Suntory is doing now is the first investment in this brand in over 70 years. Um, I am really excited with what they're doing and that's what we're going to be tasting today. We have a little bit of old, old overhaul and, <laughs> really old and a overhaul. bunch of new old overhaul. So take yeah. it away. Well, actually what we have is really old, old overhaul. We have some old overhaul. We have some new old overhaul and then we have some old overhaul that's so new it's not even out yet. So that's yes. what we're going to run through. Yes. Um, I just did. And I have not tasted most of these. Cool. I just tasted them uh, a couple days ago. We did an online tasting with the people from Beam. They were extremely excited about this. Yes, I think they they're, are. They're very pumped. Um, they're they're proud that they're bringing it back to. They're they're making uh, West Overton Village in in Southwest Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, which is a. It's not a historic recreation. It's a. It is the oldest, uh, the only pre-Civil War industrial village still remaining in Pennsylvania. It is the home of the Overholt family. It's the only place in the United States where you can actually visit the home of the founder of the brand. You can't go to Jacob Beam's home. You can't go to Elijah Craig's home. Uh, his final distillery is now the museum. Uh, there are a few barns on the property, a number of workers' houses. It's a very, very compelling thing if you ever get the chance to visit. And there is also a distillery yes we just we just started in fact just filled our first 30 gallon barrel of and when, when sam says we he's on the board of, of west over yes so and i'm helping to distill there as i said a uniquely interior <laughs> perspective <laughs> so let's try the old old overholt um this uh, is distilled in 1940 bottled in 1945 i obtained this sample uh on ebay when it was still legal to buy whiskey on ebay uh, but it has not survived the trip as well as I think it may have. We, we agreed it's a it's a little bit acidic, maybe astringent. Um, more a kind of um, almost like it's not bad. I want I want to say cedar almost like hmm. a cedar lining hmm, in a yeah. in a box. Okay. No, I've got that. It's not bad. I mean, I'm no. not saying this whiskey, it's very drinkable. Yeah. But I don't think it's a good representation. It seems of, thin. Yes, it seems thin. And, yeah. And that sort of surprises me. Okay. So, so anyway, 
That's that's not our benchmark. Our no, benchmark no, that is, was just that was a curiosity. Yes, thank you. So our, we start with uh, the flagship old Overholt uh, straight rye 80 proof from 2019. And these bottles are kind of annoying because the caps want to stick inside. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yup. So this is a chill filtered whiskey bottled at 80 proof. Now wait, let's let's have these right side by side so you can jump right into them. Oh, sure. This is the new improved uh, Old Overholt flagship. That's what's in this bottle. It's at 86 proof. Uh, it is non-chill filtered. And, um, and it's got a red cap. It has a red cap, and you'll <laughs> notice that uh, Abe Oberholt is uh, is frowning again. And they made his picture look at, look how uh, relatively small it is uh, on the pint label, even though it's a smaller label. And they really uh, heightened Abe's visage on the uh, new label, and I I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just so impressed with the effort that they are putting into this virtually forgotten brand now. Yeah, I mean, when you and I started drinking Old Overholt, it was bottom shelf. Yes. You know, just forgotten, yes. what, 60 cents a shot, something like that? Right. Yeah. Um, by the way, both of these are still uh, three-year-old whiskeys. They are yes. not four-year-olds. Correct. They are three-year-old whiskeys. So... Very bourbony on the nose, this 80 proof. Yeah. And um, a lot of candy, a lot of just like almost one dimensional sweet candy. And, and we ought to say that the old, old Overholt in the pint um, uh, uh, was a, a, a mash of 80% rye and 20% barley malt. Ah. So we now have a mash that is 51% rye and a, and a portion of corn, and then your, your malt. So. Corn is a, uh, a common component in well, you know, your eyes. Well, you know, when you give it to a bourbon maker, they got a hammer and your whiskey looks like a nail. Well, and I don't hold, I don't hold any of the bottom shelf stuff uh, or the corn sure. edition or any of that because Beam kept this brand alive. If they had not kept this brand alive, we would not be able to be doing this tasting today. That's that, the 80 proof. Is you know what? Stop talking and start chalking. That's, taste that difference. Wow. Right? Wow. Now, how much of that is the 86 proof and how much, how much is, is that the non-chill non filtered? filtered? I don't know. But, I, but this is this really... When you taste the difference between the bonded chill filtered and non-chill filtered, I think you're going to say same, it's... Same thing. It's going to be the non-chill it, it, filtered. It's, this is... The difference is surprising here. I mean, I was... I have to admit, I was never a real big believer in the uh, difference in flavor between chill filtered and not. But... This right here is doing it for me. This is uh, this is making making Lou Bryson a believer. Um, wow! You and I um, wow. also toured uh, Michter's, and we're going to be doing a um, uh, a Michter's tasting uh, sometime in the near future. In Pennsylvania Michter's. No, I'm talking about when we toured the Kentucky one. Oh yes, yes, yes. And, um, I remember they make a big deal there about the effect of different kinds of filtering on on the whiskey. I think they pay more attention to that than just than anyone. anybody. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, um, oh, what's his name? The guy they called Doctor No. I'm embarrassed to get. Oh, rid Willie of his name. Pratt. Pratt. Yeah, Willie Pratt. Uh, was God. I mean, did a whole scientific paper on it, um, and and t tested thirty four different filtration, wow. something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only place in Michter's Distillery you're not allowed to take a picture is where they filter <laughs> and it, everything. And it drove us crazy trying to figure out what they didn't want us to see. <laughs> All right, so this is the older uh, Overholt Bonded, which actually isn't that old. This is a fairly recent um, addition. And, and I always really like even the chill filtered version of this particular yes. product. Yes, yes. Okay, so this and again, is again really all of these things are really reasonably reasonably yes. priced. Yeah, this is under twenty bucks, I think. Okay, so okay, we've got I will say the the flagship, the new the eighty six proof, went from an eighty proof chill filtered bottle at seventeen dollars to a uh, a non chill filtered eighty six proof for a buck more. That's I, I'll tell that's you good what, value. Yes, the difference the difference between those two is way more than a buck's worth of difference. Absolutely. All right, so we've got two uh, bottle and bond. Um, when did the original, uh, the recent old overhauled bottle and bond come out? Oh, five years ago, maybe. Is it that long? Yeah, I, uh, four or five. I was, I was maybe? thinking three, but okay. 
Um, but this is going to be coming be. out. This is going to be coming out later this year. Oh, color's about the same. Big, um, big black cherry note for me. I like that. In the new one, yeah, much richer. Yeah, that that that. Now here we're working on whiskeys that were and are still a hundred proof. So the difference in this is a chill for non chill it's definitely filtration. Chill filtration. Yeah, much uh, big, much bigger both body. Four year old whiskeys. Both four year old. Both four years old. Mo much bigger body on the on the mm. bonded or the. You can you can feel filter. that difference as soon as it comes into your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's almost silky. Mm. Yeah, buddy. They're both good, but they are that good. second one. Mm. Mm. Oh, show yes. my glasses. So much better. I got so the. Much uh, better. The Old Farm Pure Rye Whiskey, which and is an old, old Overholt Overhold brand. And whoop, got the Overholt. So we're, uh, Old Farm was the family's original brand that was made at West Over. And Old Overholt, even though the whiskeys were the same when it was made at the Broadford Distillery, uh, they never made Old Overholt at West Over, and it was always Old Farm. And that closed, ah. the, that closed the prohibition. And old, although old, Farm old Farm was on the building. Yes. Right. Although Old Farm yeah, was produced at the Broadford Distillery and the large distillery. What do you need? Uh, an empty for so I can pour some. For you. Okay, and when you say the large distillery, you mean the capital L, right? The, large. the Henry Large Distillery yeah. that was also owned by National Distillers um, after Prohibition. We're in the short oh, on this. Big, I must that's have liked a big it. hit there, man. What is this? This is the Old Overholt 114, 114, which will be coming out this fall. This is the one that you this really is like. uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio only, which I have to say, as a resident of Pennsylvania, just blew my mind. <laughs> Um, yeah, that doesn't happen. We never get the only <laughs> release. You know, and to be honest, for Beam to do this, Beam Suntory, a, a company that's based in Illinois and has its heart in Kentucky, to acknowledge that this brand is from Pennsylvania and have the release be here and Ohio because it's, of the bottling connections. It's significant. It, it shows what they're doing with this brand, with this whiskey. I shouldn't just say brand because it's... Yeah. Wow. Now, the 114 the here on is definitely a call out to old granddad 114. Yes. Uh, which both is of which were, were, were close to cask strength at the time. This is not cask strength. It's not coming out of the barrel of that. They're proofing it to 114, yeah. but mm -hmm. um, this is a, un unfortunately, this is a limited release. So, yeah, if I were you, if you know a beam rep, tell them you want this. And then when you get it, Tell them you want more. <laughs> I want them. There's no reason they can't keep making this. This isn't uh, this isn't limited stock. The last one we're going to taste, the 11 year old, is limited. That's got the best mouth but, so far. Whew, baby. Wow. I mean, wow. And it, can it, you imagine a? And a, it's not 114 hot. You old know? granddad, old Overholt team up wow. at 114. Wow. Ooh, just drink yeah. that all night. Yeah. Mm. No, you could drink that for about an hour and a half. Now this is also four years old. We'd be done. Yeah. Also non-chill filtered, but at 114 instead so, of 100. Clarify for me: mm -hmm. Are they not chill filtering any overhaul products from here on out? I believe that is correct. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. That's really good. Um, I will say uh, you can. It's got the lowest level of any of these sample bottles that are left. Uh, Surprisingly, the color's not. Mm -mm. Well, it's four years old. Oh, they're all four years, years old. Yeah. yeah, this is four years old. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Boy, that's good. Yes, really. Mm. I, I, I. You think know, it's got the rye spice, but it's not overwhelming because of the low level of rye. It's got the corn sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's got the full body from the non chill filtering, and it's a well balanced drink. Wow, you know, and I. Okay. I don't know how to put water in it because it's 114 proof. It drinks so darn smooth. What do you think? Here, I just put a splash. Yeah. Change anything? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I wish I would have smelled it just before I put it in, but it definitely changed something. Well, let me smell yours because I'm not putting yeah, water there, in mine. Still have I don't have much. No, I don't okay. have enough to. <laughs> I'd have to put it in with a teeny little <laughs> dropper. <laughs> Oh, that is different. It's spicier. It's not as sweet. Yeah? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, we probably shouldn't in COVID period. Yeah, but we're oh, we are practically we're already running yeah, elbows right. here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> here, you want me to pour it in your glass? Yeah, that's all right. Really that's all right. I'll pour myself a little more later. So this, which we have a whole bunch oh. of. Mm. Really? Oh boy. Yeah. Damn. It really did something to it. Wow. You okay. No. It? Okay. No. I'm gonna keep that one right here. <laughs> So this is our last one. This is a uh, an old Overholt, eleven year old, non chill filtered at ninety two point six proof. Um, the ninety two point six proof was a um, the no. I want you empty so I can pour you some. If you don't want any of it, I'll be happy to just drink it. I, oh, you do. Okay, <laughs> you're obtuse at times, aren't you? Um, uh, the ninety two point six proof. Um, was a mm. a tussle with these guys. They described um, proofing it so many different times in different ways that it was almost annoying. Um, and they weren't just, it wasn't just how much water they were adding, it was how long they were putting it in the, uh, letting it sit in the blending tank before bottling hmm. made a difference. Well, Six hours, know, just aromaless water to a whiskey, you could substantially change the flavor, not just the alcohol level, the flavor and the aroma, Absolutely. because it, yeah. it varies on what comes out. And they found that this 92.6 was where it shone. Hmm. It was... Well, good. It's and, and once again, it shows the attention that they are paying to these products now, which... Um, as I, I understand mean, it, I, Freddie No was on this. Yes, uh, young yes, Freddie, a young little book, Freddie. Freddie. Um, yes. And I, I mean, that I guy showed his chops his on the, yep, really showed his chops on those three little book bottlings. Um, uh, we may have to do those, those come I, to think of it. Do you have them? I do. I have only had the first one, and I had it with Freddie at Whiskey Fest, and I said, Freddie, this is like drinking a silk handkerchief. I it was just Okay, amazing. you know what? The second and third one are possibly better. Wow. I, I couldn't believe it because I really like that first that's little book. That's an exercise in blending different whiskeys together. I, you know, the more I learn about whiskey, the more I learn that it's true. The blender mm. is possibly more important than the distiller. The distiller. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're the sure. most important person there. Anyway. Wow. Have you tasted this yet? Mm. I get some toasted marshmallow in that. Sure. It's actually a, that's a, that's a lighter, brighter whiskey. It is for eleven years old. For eleven years yes. old, you would expect it to be a little and it's, darker, and it's, woodier. It's a little darker than the four-year-old, but not substantially. Um, yeah, it's that's mm. that's another well done. And I take well, it that's honey there. That's going to be a very limited release. That is a very limited release. Unfortunately, I we getting that in Pennsylvania. Where you are getting that in Pennsylvania? I, I I'm thinking five thousand cases, huh? Something like that. I okay. can't remember exactly. Um, do we have friends at Beam that might give us? We do something? have friends at Beam, and I will. Um, I'll, I'll try to remember to put this in the notes for the video when it goes up, um, because I do have these numbers somewhere. Uh, I just don't have them at my fingertips okay. because my memory sure. is for crap. Uh, I could be off by an order of magnitude on that. But the 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 main point is, it's a one shot. Yeah, you know, you they can. don't they don't have it. It's more absolutely of this. delicious. It's very easy to drink. And, the, and this is eighty nine, bucks. Nine. 80 bucks for an 11 year old old overhaul. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you look at some of the older MGP sourced whiskeys that are coming out that are 120 bucks, 140 yeah. bucks for something that age. Um, the other thing that, that Beam is, is doing is that uh, 12 year old Knob Creek that's going to be at 60 bucks, I think. Is that is that correct? I, I, I again I don't I think so I don't have a good head for this memory thing <laughs> mm. so that's the new wow. old overhaul um, wow we're gonna have a new flagship with the uh, the red cap oddly enough you're actually gonna have to look for that red cap because the pandemic has kind of screwed up pull through on uh, on what's on the shelf and what isn't okay uh, they're not pulling the old stuff they're selling it through no they shouldn't right um, but some places are gonna have the red cap some places are not it is national release look for it again uh, suggest retail is about a buck more um, 86 proof instead of 80 non chill filtered instead of chill mm -hmm. filtered I mean, and we the, can difference taste the difference is obvious wow the yeah. difference is obvious um, thank you 
Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> and then, and thank you for the, uh, I mean, the difference on the bonded, again, noticeable. Yes. Um, In fact, I see the difference there. I'm not even do. sure there is a price change on that one. Hmm. I don't, and I don't think that may yeah. be the same price. It's like 20, um, 22 bucks or something. Yeah, and the 114 is 29. Wow. Um, I, only PA done. in Ohio only. Well, and, and you know, they're, they, they can't charge immense prices for this right now because they're working off of a base from a $20 bottle. Right. An $18 bottle. Right. And it's so, also four-year-old whiskey. Yeah. So. Right. Um, the 11-year is going to be a very limited release. Um, again, um, 80 Get bucks. Get you can. Uh, if you see it, grab it. Um, I... I have nothing bad to say about this. I'm, I, I mean, as, as a Pennsylvanian, I'm overjoyed. Yes. Yeah. Same here. Same here. In That's fact, our. Oh, sorry. They, now they now they put uh, born in PA, made in and Kentucky, made in Kentucky yeah. right on the label. That's great. So. That's our tasting. Here we are. Um, we did we did the new old Overholtz. Uh, we've got them uh, coming at you. We're gonna have another episode up shortly after this one, in which we do. A fistful of barrels. Um, we got a bunch of samples from uh, Joe Beatrice, the uh, barrel whiskeys. I also have some older samples that Joe sent me uh, years ago when I was still doing reviews for Whiskey Advocate. I have, uh, I want to say barrel number, I know I have barrel number one. I think I have number four and number five as well. What do they have? Are they 24 now? Or? This is 24. Okay. This is the uh, the barrel dovetail, which just won a, uh, a huge award, was rated one of the best whiskeys in the world. Haven't tasted it yet. Look, looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Me too. I think we have nine barrels to get through in that tasting. Nine so it's barrels. Be, That's uh, a lot of whiskey. It's, <laughs> it's going to be uh, whiskey speed dating because uh, yes. we are going to try and keep it to half an hour. I think yes. we got a little over on this one, but thank you again, and yeah. we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. 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 Absolutely. There we are. There he is. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not trying to diss you. you yeah.